All right, so um, that's the old. So let's look at this. All right, so I haven't looked at this pair in a while. So let's see. What's Ari here? All right, so typically what I generally do is I'm going to remove all this to start over fresh. All right, so I normally do top down analysis first. I mean, that's the, always should be your first course of action whenever you're trading. So you need to figure out the direction of the market was possibly going, et cetera, which you pretty much did that, but um, I don't think you really did enough marking up, honestly, for you to really uh, be able to accurately determine anything. Mm -hmm. So okay. from this point, I mean, I could do that, but that's really not accurate. Technically, this is what it would probably look like, to be for real. If I was to yeah. draw it. Um, but typically, you have people that do this, but that doesn't look right. Structure-wise, this is what we got. Yeah. Like on the monthly. All right. So also on the, on the monthly time frame, if you look at it, um, I don't, let me see if I can draw something on this chart. Okay, can't hide anything. All right, so on the monthly, if you look at this, you'll notice in this area here, you can, can you see me circling that area? Mm -hmm. All right, so that is what we could call a possible supply zone area because you notice whenever price actually came to this area right here, at least the last time, it's going to have a huge drop. All right, so from that drop, from this top down to this bottom, you're looking, looking at over 1,900 pips. So okay. that's definitely an area to watch on the monthly, even though this could possibly do something like this. It could go up, down. Up. It could technically keep going, but I seriously doubt it right now. I mean, there's mm -hmm. always going to be a reaction. So one thing about supply and demand, and when you're looking for supply and demand, typically you're going to find that either on the monthly, weekly, or daily. So I like to trade that as opposed to minor structure and minor zones, which is what you typically marked up mm -hmm. when you're on the hour time frame. That's minor structure. So you understand that major structure is always going to be overpowered minor structure minor structure can work but i mean it's, it's kind of a toss-up you know with that um, especially if that's the only way the only thing you're really using for confluence so yeah. understanding wave patterns but that's kind of too technical so i'm trying not to do that but it can come up come down to this line and then up again Mm. Okay. I can see you. All right. So that's pretty much what I'm anticipating. And even if I hypothetically draw this from this point, from here, from this bottom up to this top, you notice that that's a perfect 618 retracement. Hmm. And, and that's right there on the trend line. So that's market structure. <laughs> um. And that's typically how I look at it. So you understand what the sweet box zone is, right? You said a sweep zone? Sweet box. No, I never heard of that. All right, so we call this the sweet box on Fibonacci. So that's pretty much the 38, 50, 61. So if, if you're going to um, buy or sell, those are the zones that I only trade fibs in. I don't I don't look at the 23 or the 786 or whatever on currency. Now, if I'm doing uh, crypto, then 
uh, 786 makes sense because crypto loves 786 retracements. The corrections are typically 786. Yeah. But but when you're talking about currency, you're going to look for a 38, a 50, or a 618. A 38, typically, you will see that if the trend is strong, it'll just correct to like a 38 and keep going. If it's not as a strong trend, you'll either get a 50 or a 618. Personally, I prefer the 618 over anything because that pretty much uh, gives me conclusive evidence, especially once price gets <laughs> to this point, which is what you another thing you should look at. For example, once it comes down here, or if it comes down, um, once price hit this area right here, whatever, wherever the structure is, there's a trend line here. Okay, that's one confluence. Then you have Fibonacci 618. That's another confluence or another reason to enter. Once price gets in this area, if you think that this is giving you conclusive evidence to enter a trade, what you want to look for at that point is price action on a lower time frame. This is a monthly, so I don't normally trade for the monthly. I'm just kind of talking to you from this example. Yeah. So uh, you would drop down to like the weekly or whatever and just look at the counter space at that point to kind of see what it's doing. And typically, you know, uh, you may get like a reversal candle right here, or uh, you may get a W in this case, um, or a double bottom right here, or some, something that will indicate that yeah, price is about to reverse once it hits that area of structure. That's how you know um, that's to be your entry. Pretty much, yeah. So on the weekly, okay, so you remember, uh, let me highlight this area too, because this is, this is actually a supply zone here. This whole area. Why would you consider it as a, a, a supply zone? Uh, because from the monthly, it dropped 1,900 pips in the area. Yeah, OK. Um, and you see, here's a touch. And I'll see a touch, touch it. yeah, touch. yeah. Boom. So all right, so um, coming in. To this area all this really is but you notice as well once price came here what i'm looking for as well knowing that i indicated this is a plan zone once price came close to it sometime as well what i say a lot of people do is you notice that the wick is all the way up here 125 now there's a chance it could still go there, but the likelihood of that happening is slim. Um, it doesn't do that all the time. So a wick is pretty much price went there, but then it came back and the body closed at 124. Uh, so that's your close price. The wick really doesn't matter. It's just kind of showing you the area of giving you a gauge of what price went in that area. So. Right here is 125, right here is like uh, 123, okay? So it didn't necessarily go all the way up there, but it came close to it in this area where price was consolidating over here. Mm -hmm. And then it, it produced rejection candles. Okay, you see that? Yeah. All right, so that's telling me, hey, it's respecting this area. It came down, came back up again, rejection candle, rejection candle. It looks like it's trying to reverse. Okay, so what else do you see forming here? Um, I see a what's that a morning star at the bottom of it? Over here. Oh, oh no, it's yeah down there. Um, was that a? Is that a morning? I, I don't know what that is. You tell me. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up right now. I got an app that helps me. Yeah, I wouldn't. Don't worry about this coming down here. I'm talking about what else do you see? What kind of pattern is this? It like is um a head and shoulders. Possibly, yeah, I can see that. 
But what else? No, I don't see nothing. That's all. Okay. So you do got a hater, potential hater shows. Also, you have a double top one. Oh, dang it. I was thinking it, but I doubt it. Three. Yeah. A double top, the tops don't always match. Usually a double top or a double bottom is just a W or a M. That's all it is. Yeah. So we have that potentially forming two. Okay. Um, so you can say that could be possible confluence. Um, where's the head and shoulders thing at? Right here. Okay, we can say head and shoulders. Let's do that. Oh, I was like, what's wrong with my thing? And you ain't say it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how the hell get down there? Okay, hold on. Oh, this thing's not what in the world. Left shoulder. Hey, you might get it this time. Mm. There we go. Do you use this at all? Uh -uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it took me a while to learn training you or whatever, but once you, you get it, you got it. All right, so. Now you got that. That's on the weekly time frame. Let me see what else I can do on here. All right. Um, weekly. We got. So, um, pretty much you want to box in price as much as possible. This is how my mix pretty much taught me. Um, so boxing in price. Uh, I probably should have never drew that pattern, but oh, whatever. Um, so from here to here, I think from here, we can do that. Let's just do that. All right. Um, All right, let me remove this because I can't even see what I'm doing now. Got to be lines on the chart. Also, keep your, I don't know how you, you normally mark up, but typically I don't like a lot of stuff on my chart because I, I can't see what I'm doing at that point. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't like a lot of my either. All right, so let me start over. All right, I'm going to go to the weekly i'm just gonna do it for the weekly this time you got what i was doing there all right so i'll do something like this as well go back to the monthly all right you start over typically i'll mark my lines first so i'm just gonna do that so you go from here to here this was drawn that last week yeah. Okay. Weekly. All right. We can do boom, boom. And then we'll highlight this as a sale zone. Okay. <laughs> Change to red. All right. Anything else you see I can do? Yeah. What is it? Um, a double top. No, I mean as far as marketing up. Oh. Mm, Wait, boxing. what was your question again? <laughs> I 
I said anything else you see I could do as far as marketing up oh, okay, on this okay, weekly okay. conference. We can call that oh. support. Even though I know I probably would never get that, but Why that's a nice that's a nice area. Cause it it'll just create too much lines for me personally. Gotcha. But yeah, um, that is support right here. Another area to watch. Um Sometimes, usually, I, I like to draw my support and resistance lines to the camera body. Gotcha. Uh, for the reason I said, like, if you would have um, this line here, let me, let me make it thicker. So if you would have said that this is support, for example, price doesn't always come there. <laughs> Yeah. Like you got people that's selling that's gonna take profit before you, and then you end up getting caught in a trade and it reverses and go back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you probably had that happen before. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I like to try to beat everybody out. Um I forgot who 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 taught me that. I read that it was a lady, um Carol or something. I forgot. I read her book and her philosophy on drawing to the candle body actually made sense. So I do that um, sometimes. So from here to here, you can even do from here to here. You can just call that, you know, support. So if you were to a swing trader, for example, and you caught the trade up here, you can take it all the way down to 117. Okay. Yeah. Um, daily. All right. What do you see? And just making you? sure when you do this markup, you basically mark up just for because I know you told me that you normally um enter like around like the five minute, 15 minute, some of it. So are you just doing it for like your monthly, weekly, daily just to have confluence of where like not of course it's the entry, but like of where like precisely you can enter it or like what's the word I'm looking for? Like for it all to make sense. Okay, for instance, like you see how you see at the double top. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'll be honest with you. I think I do, but I'm so I'm gonna try to answer it. I mm -hmm. Mark up on a daily, weekly, monthly because those are the most accurate time frames as far as price action. The gotcha. lower you go in time, the noisier or busier price is going to be. Yeah. So on the on the larger time frames, you get the overall bigger picture. On the lower time frames, you're getting everything before all of that actually happens. <laughs> so um, you can trade on a lower time frame, but I don't usually mark up on it because um, unless I'm following the trend like on a weekly or daily or something mm -hmm. you know but other than and doing short-term trades but being how I trade I like to do it this way because this just gives me more wiggle room to do what I need to do um, without having to babysit the trade all the time gotcha so it requires a patience overall but um it's just a better way of trading, especially if you're busy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, you said a double top right here, right here is a double top, but you have another double top as well on a daily if you look at it closely. If I zoom in and show you this, that's a boom, boom. That's a double okay. top. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah. you can have patterns within patterns. I've been trying it's, to... Um only notice it if it precisely do it not like not like that because I would never thought that's a double top to be honest yeah so and you gotta remember you are in the supply zone right here where this red is mm -hmm. so you're look you're looking for a signal or reason to sell at this point so on a daily if I was to come down to really break this down even further um I could draw a line like this. We can do 
something like that. I see what you mean about boxing it in. Yeah, you want a boxing price. Though I don't like that boxing. Um, so I'm not gonna do that. But um, yeah, I mean, you want to trap it as much as possible, which this actually makes sense. That's one touch, two touch, take it to that line there. Yeah. I could draw a line there, but I don't personally like that, but it is what it is. So um, that's pretty much it uh, from that point. So we're just kind of waiting. Um, we have, this is a little area here. I mean, if you mark up everything, you'll have a whole bunch of lines, but you can say, okay, but well, this is support right here. Cause you got one, two, three, then you got another support here. At 19, which I guess we'll do that just for the sake of doing it. So we can say support there. We can call this support. And then we can say this is the area too. But you see how? It just, yeah, I see. It just cut <laughs> it up. Yeah. But, I, don't, I don't like that. But I mean, if you were a zone trader, I mean, you could say, okay, I'm going to take it from this double top down to. 120 66 and then once it break this area i'm gonna take it down to this once it break that i'm gonna take it down to this once it break this i'm gonna take it down to that all the way down to the trend line then once it breaks the trend line then i'm gonna take it all the way down to 110 or wherever it was like some people do that i mean it could work i just personally don't like all the lines in my chart but it's not wrong at all but um, if you're gonna do that, like I would draw my lines from the daily versus like the hour because it'd just be it'd be really oh, crazy on the hour time. Yeah, the that's way it's more spaced out. Yeah, you see now I'm not even messing with minor structure now at this point. Yeah. So I'm just looking for an entry at this point. So the entry in this case right now, um for me would have been right here. I would answer that. Because of the um the retail of the yeah. line. Came down, created the double top, price bounce, and I would have been in the trade already. That's interesting. And only because even on a daily, you, it, I think that's the same double top that you pointed out. And then now looking at the four hours, like spread it out. It looks like it's yeah. actually head and shoulders too. Uh, well, not necessarily. It, oh, okay. Uh, but it can be, a, it, they call it a king's crown. Oh, <laughs> I see. But yeah, you see when you go lower, it actually looks more like a double top. Yeah. Um, so that would have been my entry now. Um, how to get in later. Um, what's, where's price at? 121, something. All right, so to enter now, um, what I probably do is, let me see something. I'm gonna actually draw the line from here, from here. See if I can find something. So we have, probably somewhat in a channel. You can call it a channel. Uh, come on, get out of the way. All right, so yeah, somewhat of a channel is not really a wedge. Yeah, so it's channeling a little bit. So what I would wait for now at this point, I mean, since you if you missed that entry there, mm -hmm. is if I was to enter this trade, would be for price to actually come down, break this, 
three fifths. There we go. Go down. But see, to me, that like that was a, a uptrend. Like, why? I mean, I, I don't know. It's from I understand from like the daily and the weekly that it does that it did create a sale, maybe. But like coming from the channel and how you channel it, how how can you not like overshadow or overcloud your analysis because of that? You get what I'm saying? Because I would think that that's a a buy instead of sell. It's definitely in an uptrend. I agree with you there. However, you're in a sales zone. Oh, okay. okay. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. you're, you're playing for the reversal now at this point because it's in an area of, of where a huge sell-off happened. You know, that's why we got the supply zone, you know, highlighted red because the last time price was there, it sold off 1,900 pips. Mm -hmm. and, and this is price coming back to retest that area and this is the second time so um second time in a long time so when that happens you have to suspect that it's going to reverse and go down again which price has shown you multiple times even from here let's come down to the hour multiple times now it could it could change tomorrow because it is nft week but we'll see um uh, which you know sometimes i like to sit on the sidelines and watch nft to kind of see this price do weird stuff in. yeah but but it's showing you multiple times that this area the price seem to be respecting this area every time it comes up to here here's another double top boom drop so from that one from this point to this point, you got 130 pips. That's the bottom of the channel, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you would have bought it there, which I probably would not have, being where price is, but you could have bought it and rolled it back up to the top again. And once they reach the top again, you get a reversal candle, which you probably can't see because I got this too small. Um, there's no reversal candle there. But come to the top, sell it again. Come up, and now price is just kind of in a consolidation ranging type of situation. It's not really doing much, um, but it looks like bears are trying to regain control of the market. So now I'm just waiting for confirmation for price to break, which is going to break this low right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it's gonna break this low. So it's gonna break, retest, and sell long term. Now we could just keep following it well because it's been going up a minute. But you're gonna need being how long the trend was up. You're gonna have to see a massive impulse down and a correction to confirm that the trend has truly reversed. I see. Yeah, I see. Which, which that impulse, you're not going to see it. I mean, you can see it in small candles in the hour. But basically what I mean by that is like your four hour candle is going to be like 100 pips probably for this pair or 150. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. this, this pair really don't move and like 20 to 40 pips a day, depending on the day. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put that down too. Yeah, but it's it's important as well to understand your um, average true range. I think that's what it is, ATR. And basically what that is is how many pips does this fair move daily on average. If you know that the average is you can kind of gauge of trading direction as well i also um when you're trading usd pairs i mark up the dsy as well which is a dollar index so if, the, if this is bearish then um you know the buy euro it's just turning bullish then you know you're getting ready for a uh sale because it's against the dollar 
You said that you went over there because it's a what a dollar? It's it's against a dollar. Like oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I usually mark this up just for that purpose, which that's a little bit could be advanced, I guess. But um, you talk about that little curve. It look like it's advanced. Yeah. Yeah, this is the dollar index, which is pretty much give you the overall picture of what the dollar index is doing. So does we it, have a, a does that also edge. help you? Does that also help you with like with like USD and all this stuff, or just for the dollar index? USD, any USD pair. So oh, okay. like I'll see USD, like anything against the dollar in this case, like I have it going up because this is a falling wedge price broke out, came back and retest. And it looks like it's going up to this area right here. So I'm expecting it to turn bullish at some point. And plus it's in the demand zone as well. So I'm expecting it to at least come to this trend line here, um, which that should run for a week or two when it is confirmed bullish, but it needs to break this high here uh, that week. Okay, because it came in sharply reversed here. So depending on the direction of where this is going, if you're trading a USD pair, if this is bullish, then you know where a, U, a USD pair like USD JPY, where the USD is dominant in that pair correlation, you know that that's probably going to be a buy, okay? Gotcha. Um, if this is bearish, then Euro USD, for example, is going to be bullish. And if you look at the chart, you'll see that it pretty much correlates together. Like this has been bearish for a while. And therefore, Euro has been bullish. You see that? Mm -hmm. Also, you see on a daily, that's a channel. The daily is shows the channel pretty much clearer yeah. than the previous time frame. So it could, it could keep channeling up but you see this has been bullish since april or well, march March, year so it's time for a correction like it has to correct so it's it's channeling up now um it's getting ready to reverse so like i said before if i'm looking for an entry like i'm not gonna look on I'm not going to do my analysis on the hour because if you would have did it on the hour, you would have missed all of this. You wouldn't have been able to see it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wait for a candle to look like this candle right here. Yeah, this is um, what that, that bearish momentum candle. Yeah, this this will yeah, but this is the type of impulse you need after this type of move. So it's going to have to be a, a giant candle. You need price to break out of the channel. First and foremost, and once it breaks the channel, you want to wait for a retest or a correction, just a mini retest or a correction. And you may or may not see it smoothly on a daily, but as long as it breaks and you see, you may have to go down to the four hour or the hour to actually see it come back and, and touch this trend line again and then show a reversal signal. Once that happens, then you sell it down to the next zone if you want to, which would be 120, whatever. Okay. If it don't just mm -hmm. drop to the next zone, it depends on what happens. Either way, uh, I think price wants to start falling. I mean, it's going to fall significantly mm -hmm. um, down to at least 117, just my prediction. But also, once the well, yeah, that makes sense, though. Yeah, so once the impulse happened as well, you want to draw your fib from the daily from this down to wherever it comes to. So let's just say, hypothetically speaking, this almost looks borderline accurate. All right, so let's say if it came out to somewhere here, okay, and then it came back up to there, trend line down, 
that's what mm -hmm. you would do. Since we don't have a real candle, it's kind of hard to gauge what I'm, what I'm showing you here. But <clears throat> that's pretty much it. Okay. I have learned a lot and I put down my notes. Um, now, but when it comes to the Fibonacci, how do I reset that? Like, yeah, how do I just reset my Fibonacci? We'll call it a candle. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so Fibonacci, let's see. Click on it, click the settings icon, and then, Okay. You should just, I took a picture. Yeah, and then I think you just hit apply the follows. I think that's what you do. I don't want to do that on mine. <laughs> gotcha. But I think that's it. But if you just want to um, tweak the settings, like mine, you can just take a picture of this and just put this in. Um. Yeah, because this is pretty much what everybody used. I mean, I don't think the standard one had the stinkers on it. That's why I had to customize mine. Um, so once you get into the Fibonacci stuff, um, you want to have your stinkers on there just like this. Because let's say, for example, all right, you have price broke out, which is going to be, a, I'm anticipating a strong breakout. So this actually may happen. It may drop tomorrow from wherever all the way down here. Okay. So this is the low, that is the high. So you want to draw, in this case, in a cell from the high to the low. All right. And then you want price to come up, maybe to retest mm -hmm. here, which is the 618. It may not do the 618, it could just do a 38 or a 50, but this is just an example. All right, so if it comes to the 618, um, typically um, people use the Fibonacci extensions like the negative 27, 41, 61 yeah. as take profit levels. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's how I had it before. Well, really the 27 and the 6180. Yeah, I don't really go down that far because it hardly ever does that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the 21 to be TP1, 41 TP2, 61 TP3. Now, if you get a 618 retracement, the majority of the time, you're going to get a negative 618 extension. That's just your long term thing. Okay. So, so a swing trader will probably be one for that. But if you just wanted to be like, hey, TP1, negative, you know, 27, okay, that's what you would use that for. Etc. Um, so if it goes there, usually you're gonna get a six, a negative six one eight extension. If it goes fifty, you're gonna get a forty one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play around with it. I'm gonna definitely have back test it. To yeah, you can. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Thirty eight. That's strong momentum. Actually, 38 strong momentum, you can get a negative 6.8. This 41, 50. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 27, 50. 41. But that's a whole nother thing though. But um, from here to here, that's 150 tips. If you just wanted to keep it simple and then just take profit one. <laughs> That's not bad. But it does like okay, never mind. I figured out myself and I come to you with the answer on um how much does the what I put down? Does it range a day? Yeah. Oh the the um price. Yours? Mm -hmm. Um I'm gonna figure out the answer. I'm Huh? You know how to do the period separators? Yeah. 
I'm glad you did because I totally forgot how to do it on trading. This is it right here, but it's not making me click it. Um, yeah, that's definitely it. I just forgot how to click it. I had to ask my friend how to do this. Um, but yeah, it's easier in MT4. But basically, all you could do is if you could figure out how to click this line and get it to show the periods day separators, what you would do is each day, you will just take the range from, for example, this is a daily counter from here. Actually, I could just do daily candles from here to here. And then you would write it down and you would just go back 15 days and divide that number by 15. And that will give you the daily ATR. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so if you can't figure out, you can just measure the candles, the daily candles. Go back 15 days, though. <laughs> and then that'll give you the daily range. And then um, back 15 candles. And then um, you said subtracted how? No, you're going to take whatever uh, the, the pip range is. So you're going to measure the candles. Or if you can separate it, that'll be better. Because um, I think it'll show you. But if not, you just have to go take each daily candle because you're going back 15 days. So Five this days. one is like 96 or something like that. I guess something 86, 87. All right. So you're going to take 87 plus 50 plus whatever plus whatever. And then you're going to add up all those numbers, come up with the sum, and then you're going to divide that by 15. Gotcha. And that, and that will be your average range for this, the past 15 days. That's what you're going to look at. Does it change uh, depending on the market cycle that we're in? And, and lately, actually, these have been pretty big, but usually, you see they're not as big candles back here. But once April hit, the you know, candles got a little bigger. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Like I said, I will start on, a, I mean, you don't even have to really start on the monthly. I mean, I don't use the monthly all the time. Um, <clears> the <throat> reason why I did in this case is because we're right now in the market, we're on weekly and monthly moves. Yeah. On the chart. So it makes sense to look at them now. Now, if we weren't in a monthly move, then I'll probably be looking at the weekly or the daily. But definitely weekly and the daily is a given. Me, I, I always do that. Okay. And basically, that's just to help me find the um, supply and demand zone. And also, it should help me with the sweet box too. Sweet box zone with the Fibonacci. You can draw fibs on any time frame. Um, gotcha. I just did it on, on this one because I kind of was guesstimating what price is going to do based on the monthly since we're in the monthly move. Gotcha. This is a monthly move. So if we get a reversal, if price doesn't break this high, if it breaks this high, then it's going to keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if not, if it reverses here, it's either going to come A to this trend line right here, 118, or it's coming back down to wherever that 618 was. It was on the trend line somewhere. And then it's going to go back up, which I think mm -hmm. it was somewhere around here. Can't remember. But yeah, that's what I'm looking at on the monthly. But also another thing to keep in mind, though, usually people that trade from the monthly are position traders because a monthly trade a, mo a monthly markup on a chart can take a year to actually play out yeah. so you're not looking at the monthly solely for an entire move you're just trying to look at the overall picture you understand what I'm saying so mm -hmm. this may not get down here to probably December 
or next mm. year or whatever. <laughs> All right, but that's just kind of overall picture of what's possibly happening if the market does what you think is going to do. As you decrease the time frames, um, you're you're getting more. Obviously, you're still marking up and boxing in price to kind of see what price is doing. But at the same time, you're looking for shorter term trades in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how we ended up with, OK, you got this on the weekly. Then I think I draw my, did my zone on the weekly. But then that's how you have these zones. Here's a zone, here's a zone, here's a zone. So these are all trades that you could possibly take along the way while price is actually going down there, which you see what I'm saying? So. That's Come crazy. here. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. See, come here, boom. Break that zone, come at retest. Boom, there's another zone. Break that zone, come at retest. There's your other zone. Break that zone, retest, another zone. You see what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. your short, that's your intermediate trades. Yeah, you made it very simple. I was trying to make it hard. <laughs> it's all good. So I, I think I'm sounding complicated right now. I'm trying to not to complicate it. No, I'm keeping it. Okay. So um, yeah, so after you figure that out, um, like I say, everything from there, like if you can't do anything else as far as marking up, but you pretty much already done all that here, you just pretty much looking for entry at this point. Yeah, which wait. yeah, so break channel retest, boom. Okay. And I like to enter like on the five and 15 minute, but um, it's nothing really here to really show you, show you that, but I like tighter entry. So depending on what price is doing, if you need a clearer picture, as far as entry, I mean, it's nothing wrong with going down to the five minute. Like that's the only reason I would do that in this, in this case, because I pretty much already, uh, done my analysis and know what I'm looking for based on a higher time frame, which is given the overall picture. So now, even though the five minutes gonna look completely different than that, I'm just pretty much just looking for an entry so I can see the market clear. Like, let's say, and to kind of make that make more sense is, if this broke out and it came down like you thought it did, and then it came back up, Okay, uh, let's go to the 15 minute so I can actually. Why would you why would you not enter now? Yeah, because it could it could reverse, like it's not in the area oh. that I'm comfortable with entering. Like structure-wise, it would have made sense to enter here because this is a supply zone and it came back up to retest here. Right now it doesn't make sense for me to enter now because it's kind of a la la land. <laughs> and, and structure is right here on this line right so mm -hmm. it's still in the channel so I needed to break the channel you can do a sell stop if you want but that's still kind of high risk um so I went I wanted to break the channel come back retest and then sell, or you can sell it after this. Yeah. But that's a little bit high risk, but. Oh, your first thing. <laughs> All right, so right here though, like on the five minute, look, well, this is a 15 minute. Like if price breaks out of this and then it comes back up and retests, the reason why you want to go to like a lower time frame is what I mentioned to you before, so that you can see your candle movement. Sometimes you'll be able to identify that like on the hour or whatever, like you may see like a um, pin bar or a hammer or something with just a reversal candle. But this is the trend line here. So I want to see during the retest, I want to see a hammer or a pin bar or a kangaroo tail, a double top something at this point of structure that indicates that we're going to get that continuation down and to confirm the trend reversal. If I don't see that at this point of structure, 
then I'm probably not going to take the trade until I actually see that because price is always going to tell you what it's doing. Mm-hmm. Did that part make sense? Yeah, it did. Okay, so that's the only reason why you would drop to a lower time frame to kind of get a clear picture of counter movement. And plus it helps with tighter entries, you know, as well. The only, the reason I ask is because you will see how that huge drop down there, like from on the 15 minute. I just need to uh, work on my mind frame on not having that fear of missing out. Cause they're like, that's what, you know, that could be a good, to me, like that could be a good, like, sell but at the same time you don't want it to like go against you and just wipe out your whole account so I think I just need to work on my psychology and on FOMO there honestly yeah the pay you remember an IML elite the patient trader pays the impatient trader <laughs> yeah. yeah the impatient trader pays the patient trader she said it all the time which is true like you have no reason at all to answer right here. Like I don't, I mean, you could say, hey, it's a head and shoulder, which it does look like one, but that's yeah. on a 15 minute time frame. Like I'm not gonna trust a 15 minute head and shoulder because yeah. what could happen is that thing and okay, I'm gonna get in now. All right, cause I'm gonna catch the move from here all the way down here. Okay, and then the market, <laughs> mm-hmm. NFP. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, you just want to wait for confirmation. Like, it's still in the channel right now. So we need a channel breakout and retest before you sell it long-term now. And it's a good chance it's going to do that. I mean, it normally does, um, unless there's, like, some um, natural event, like, something silly happened like us bomb somebody or something crazy happened like that and then you may get like a 300 pill drop and you just miss it uh but in that case like i said you can do a sell stop and then you can catch it but you just need to make sure you do it below the point of structure of a reversal because you don't want to do a sell stop right here for example which I don't really like using them all the time because sometimes you'll get caught up, like for example, especially with if you're trading aggressively, like for example, you see this area here, let's say you put a sell stop here, price mm-hmm. broke out, triggered your stop in your, your order. And then instead of it coming all the way down here, it came right here and then it reversed and went back for the retest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you ain't draw down or you blew your account if you over leverage. You see what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. you gotta wait. So I like to wait for the breakout retest, then I'm getting in. Okay, I got you. So, this has oh, definitely it. helped me a lot. Well, I'm glad it did. I'm glad it did. But yeah, you gotta have um Confluences, more confluences, like um, where is price at? Is it in the supply or demand zone? Which is very, very important. That's our institution trade. Um, and they usually stay on a daily and higher time frame. They're not drawing analysis on anything lower than that. So is it in the supply and demand zone? Is it at a point of Fibonacci retracement? Um, is it at a point of structure, top of a channel? bottom of a channel on top of a trend line bottom of a trend line um once price hit that trend line what did it do did it do a double bottom did it did it produce a reversal candle a setter like those are all confluences which is basically your reason for entry so i usually look for three or more but they have to be strong silent ones you know what i mean yeah and, and once you get that part down, I think you'll be, you'll be all right. Um, but yeah, you got to work on your markup, your marking up. You got to put more try time in and boxing in the price. Yes, sir.
Any other questions? Nope. I can't wait till NFP week is over though, so I can see how it reacted. Yeah, I mean, you can you can practice when we get off of here and mark some up, and then just kind of watch it, see what it does. Like, um, I like to trade the after effect of it. So, unless I'm like in a good entry point, like if I would have got in at the top of this euro trade, which I didn't take it, but if I would have got in at the top, you know, I move my stop loss and profit and just kind of let it ride to mm -hmm. see what it does. But since I didn't do that, uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do is just kind of watch to see what price does because it could come back up to retest again because they've been playing games uh, with the U.S. dollar because um, I forgot what the date is. But they're waiting on something, some type of announcement. China is buying the U.S. dollar to, to give it more boost uh but they're waiting on something i forgot what it is some meeting on the 15th or whatever it is is it the 15th yeah the yeah june 15th of the something or the fourth like the fourth i know next week in the 15th or the week of the 10th i can't remember the exact date two important days for the u.s dollar because obviously we have inflation and stuff like that but the Federal um, Reserve is supposed to make some type of announcement or something, which could boost the dollar. Yeah. So the market has been pretty much ranging or consolidating on certain pairs, um, waiting for that announcement or waiting for NFP which I don't really honestly suspect the job numbers to be good tomorrow, but, you know, we could be surprised. <laughs> so if the job numbers are bad, which they probably will be, because a lot of people still have mm -hmm. um, <laughs> then it's probably going to go back up and retest again. Or, you know what I mean? And, and if that happens, you know, we just uh, it's just a waiting game again to kind of see what it's going to do. Is it going to break this high and keep going higher? Or... Is it gonna retest and then start going down again next week um, in preparation for whatever announcement they're gonna do? So, okay. because on the flip side of this, the, the dollar index, I'm gonna show you this and then I'll let you go. If you look at this, I did this on the monthly. Let's look at that. Yeah. All right. So the dollar index, this is a flat pattern. The dollar is a flat pattern, which is a corrective pattern for more upside. Right? You can call it a flag, you can call it a, a flag or whatever. And to put it in, into perspective, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, but I'm not going to highlight that. So you also have a demand zone there as well. So what I did, one or two things can happen here. One, it can reverse from where it is now because this has a double bottom area. Okay. okay. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. And on daily, we had a falling wedge, which I showed you that earlier. Yeah. It can go up from here, or it can come back down to this 618. Because really, when price is kind of like not on a Fibonacci point, I'm I'm very skeptical about taking a trade like that. You see what I'm saying? Like it's, I don't know what you would call it, it's uh, 55. Let's just call it 55. That's kind of a odd place for price to be at you know what I mean like if it was directly on the 50 I'd be like okay for sure it's going up but because it's like right here it's kind of a toss-up it can either go up or it can come back down to retest the 618 and then go up you see what I'm saying so yeah. if it doesn't shoot up we could get one more move down to the 618 88.433 which if that does happen then euro usd is going to go up and probably retest again or even possibly break that high 
Gotcha, because, okay, I got you. That's how we use the dollar index to trade. Like, if you if you learn how to do that, though, like, if you trade in USD pairs and you learn how to correlate the two together with your trading, like, you would actually absolutely kill it with USD pairs because it follows it to the T, you know, about 99% 90, of the time. Mm -hmm. Unless that of the pair that you're you're going up against is just significantly stronger than the dollar but um at that moment but right now the usd is the strongest currency in the world so yeah that's that let's see what's going on here see that all of them pretty much look the same it's mm -hmm. the same as Europe. Same markup too. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just putting it into perspective. This is what I think is going to happen ultimately, but I, I could be wrong. Hmm. Does um well not in mind. Well I was gonna ask does um Euro USD and GBP USD does, does they move simultaneously? He said do they move simultaneously? You mean move mm -hmm. like together? Yeah. Um not really. It just depends on what's going on. I mean and how strong the other currency is. I mean, in this case, the dollar's been weak, so both of them been going up. However, you know, there may be a period where euro is weak and the pound is strong and euro is going down. So they don't really correlate like that. Okay, okay. But for the most part, I mean, they all, they both look similar. But it's only because the US dollar is weak right now. Yeah, yeah, and for the most part, I mean, they go together. I mean, it's against the same pair, but the pound is definitely stronger than the euro, especially GU. Mm. You see, it's a little cleaner than that one. Mm. Yeah. But it's overall it's the same. Um AU. That one looks different. But yeah, it's in the zone too. It could come up to here to A again to retest. But yeah. Um Go get there. I'm expecting gold to go to 1923. I don't know why it's playing. It just seems like it's in a, it's in a weird spot for me. It could drop from here, but I just honestly, for real, think it's gonna go up to 1920 something, then drop. Because again, it's just in an awkward spot. I don't know if you yeah. trade gold, but gold you know, loves this. I haven't looked at gold. I want to be focusing on you or you or you or USD. Yeah, I think you said you tried it before and you blew your account. Is that this is what I haven't been focusing on? <laughs> yeah, so it does move fast. You gotta be, I mean, you gotta be precise with gold. But it loves six one eight retracement, which is why. Plus, look, you see how long that count is supply. Yeah. Supply, supply. So I think it's coming here to retest the supply it could come there or it could be close to here to wait yeah like you just you respected that little area mm -hmm. all right well that's it for me i guess you thank you questions? i really no i really appreciate it oh no problem no problem 
So just let me know if you have any other questions. Okay, I will. Once I um, get to marking up my charts, if I got confused or anything. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.